the interaction. As I was saying in my previous lessons, we're just discussing some sort of a tip of the iceberg. And most of the topics that we'll be discussing now will be discussed thoroughly in our next lessons. But now let's take a look at the interaction between computer and human. The interaction paradigm. So during the 1950s, batch processing was actually uh, what is mostly used in processing data. So batch processing means we have to collect all data and then we have to encode the data uh, by batch. Then during the 1960s, time sharing became also the interaction part or the, the trend in interaction. So it is where there are multiple also monitors or uh, multiple users that can share uh, the resources of a server. And then by 1970s, networking became the trend. And then during the 80s, the graphical display. And then, of course, also the introduction or the pop. Uh, it is also this year that microprocessor became popular. Then during the 1990, uh, 1990s, it is where the World Wide Web became popular. And then 1995 onwards, maybe we have the grid computing and also cloud computing. And then in this era, we now have human or robot interaction or even tablet or tabletop computing. And so as we notice that as technology progress, the interaction between human and computer is actually changing. So here are some types of user interfaces. And these are the common interaction styles. So we have the command line interface, menus, natural language, question answer or query dialogue, form fields and spreadsheets. We have the WIMP or WIMP, point and click. And we also have three dimensional interfaces. Let's take a look at the command line interface. So way of expressing instructions to the computer directly. So function keys, single characters, short abbreviations, whole word, or a combination. So it is where we actually type the command itself. So these are suitable for repetitive tasks. And it is better for expert users than novices. Because of course, you have to more or less be familiar with all the commands. And you're, you should have memorized the commands that you'll be using. And it offers direct access to system functionality. Then command names abbreviation should be meaningful. So if you have used, for example, the old uh, PC DOS or Microsoft DOS, MS-DOS, then that is an example of a command line interface. Also, the typical example is the Unix system. So the Unix system is making use of command line interface. Then we have menus. So a menu is a set of options displayed on the screen. So options are always visible or visible. So less recall is here to use because you can view the options, especially as compared with a command line interface. So rely on recognition. So names should be meaningful. So that means if you uh, if you can see the option, then you should be able to recall or know the use of the particular uh, option. So the selection can be used, we can use numbers in selecting letters, arrow keys or mouse or maybe even combinations of this. So often or frequent options are hierarch hierarchically grouped. So sensible grouping is needed. So you have to group the options, especially if you have a long menu, because if you don't group your options, or maybe sensibly arrange your options, then it will be hard for the user to select the uh, option, menu option. So restricted form of full WIMP system. So later on, uh, 
menus are also used in especially graphical user interface but there are also menus for uh, text interfaces then we also have the natural language so the natural language seems familiar to the user because of course it is the natural language so as if you're just talking naturally to the computer so it's speech recognition or type natural language so in most cases uh, the natural language will use speech recognition or sometimes you can also type the natural language so the problems sometimes it can be vague or ambiguous so let's say for example that maybe there are words that can have dual meaning so it sometimes it can be hard to do well so solutions we try to understand a subset or pick on keywords so that is how uh, computers make natural language more effective and up to this point although we already have uh, natural language is gaining popularity of course it is not yet perfected we also have what we call the query interfaces so these are question and answer interfaces so user led through interaction by a series of questions so if you have if you're familiar with uh, installation wizards these are examples maybe of question and answer interfaces so suitable for novice users but restricted functionality so what uh, what the user can only do is what is placed on the screen and often used in information systems we also have query languages like SQL or SQL these are used to retrieve information from database requires understanding of database structure and language syntax hence requires some expertise especially if you're using the command line interface of uh, SQL but there are actually graphical uh, uh, graphical applications where you can query a database like QBE for example that is used by Microsoft Access then form fields so primarily for data entry or data retrieval so it is a screen like paper form so as you can see here on our screen this is an example of a form and we can type data that's why it's called form field so data put in relevant places and requires good design because if the design is bad it can confuse the user and obvious correction facilities so the user should be able to correct errors and again we'll be discussing more of this as we go on with our uh, with this course the HCI course spreadsheets so first spreadsheet is the physical then followed by Lotus 123 and Lotus 123 was actually very popular during the 80s and maybe up to the mid 90s but now I think the most popular or, and the most common spreadsheet is the Microsoft Excel so it's a sophisticated variation of form filling because we use grids so a grid of cells contains a value or a formula and formula can involve values of other cells so uh, if you're familiar with Excel you know how to do this let's say for example if you want to get a sum of different cells so in this in, the, in, a, in a particular formula you have to reference several cells so user can enter and alter data spreadsheet also maintains consistency then we have the WIMP interface or the windows icons menus or pointers or some we'll call it windows icons mice and pull down menus but basically this is a, a graphical user interface so default style for majority of interactive computer systems especially PCs and desktop machines so the windows your our operating system and of course what you're on my screen now is an example about windows icons menus and pointers as you can see this is a the browser is a window so I have here several icons you can see also my if I click on this where so for example this 
or this one. So that's the same example of a menu. And of course, you can see my mouse pointer. So this is an example of WIMP or WIMP. Then we also have the point and click interfaces. So used in multimedia, web browsers, hypertext. So we have pointer and we can click on anything here. So hypertext, I know you're familiar with hypertext, especially on web browsers. So just click something and icons, text links or location on the map. So these are point and click. So minimal typing here. All, all, uh, we almost make use of the pointer or point and click all, all the time. Then we also have the three dimensional interfaces. And one example of this is of course virtual reality. <clears throat> We're in, uh, you can see a 3D representation of the reality or the real world. And also ordinary window system can use highlighting, visual affordance, discriminate use just uh, we can have, for example, some sort of this sculptured. So it's an example of a 3D ordinary window system. But if it is used indiscriminately, it can be confusing. Then we also have 3D workspaces used for extra virtual space, light and occlusion, give depth and distance effects. So again, uh, I think this is similar to virtual reality. And actually, we, we, we may have more of this interaction, but for now, these are, as I've said, just a tip of the iceberg when it comes to computer interaction. So for now, I will end my lecture and uh, I will be discussing more. We will be discussing more of these in our next lectures. So thank you very much.